Good day to all newcomers and already ardent fans of Miu Online Universe. Bless Universe is speaking. One of the most experienced, popular and stable projects in Miu Online Universe. In the last video we looked at the entire achievement system and what it gives us in general. We also talked about the buff from achievement points, the schedule of many events and how to build a plan for an active game. Remember I mentioned Chaos Castle and King Ring? Today we will talk about such PvP events on our server. Battles between guilds are a huge part of our game and without a strong, well-coordinated and precise guild, you will not take first places in the server. Bosses, new territories, castles, dungeons are all controlled by guilds and the top ones make serious demands on players. So let's look at PvP events today. Let's go through in order again. Kanturu Domination Event it is a daily PvP event, a competition between guilds to hold points. Any guild can take part in this battle, but not all can survive in it. Duration of the event 20 minutes, and it happens twice a day. The main one in the evening at 20.30 server time and 70.30 on Sundays, and secondary at 14.30 and 11.30 at Sundays. Venue Kanturu Domination Arena entrance via NPC to Kanturu Core. Most often, 5 to 10 minutes before the start, active guilds already gather in their discords and gather in various locations convenient for them in order to form several groups and assign them the roles and positions that they will occupy. The battle map looks like this. The essence of the event is to hold points here and here. Every 3 seconds special monsters will appear in these places, killing which will give you points. 10 points here and there, and 15 points at the top spot. Additionally, Maya Nemesis mini-bosses appear throughout the arena, which gives you 50 points each and drop from them with 50% probability. Red Ribbon Box, Box of Luck, Violet Mystery Box. Tanks such as DK with a lot of health are most often placed at scoring points, since DK often lacks damage without enough stats and good equipment, thus they only prevent their allies such as Dark Lord from killing opponents. Dark Lord main skill is Fire Scream. It hits first target in front of him and yes, even allies can block it, but they will not receive damage. DK with his large health pool is able to buy some time and take points for his team in the spot while others protect him and receive a health buff from him called Inner. Since we have 3 positions for scoring points at event, guilds create teams to occupy 2 of them and 1 or 2 groups to move between positions and control the Maya mini bosses. The attacking group usually includes the strongest players in the guild, since they will have to participate in battles with enemy players more than others, clearing spots for their teammates. The basic group, as you understand, consists of 5 classes of the game, in order to receive all possible buffs, and from MG, debuffs, because without them, the group will become much weaker. As we already understood, the most advantageous position is the top spot, and from there is much more convenient to move in groups to clear other places. But you need to understand that defending the top spot is much more difficult, because there will be two approaches to you. Imagine your battle take place between three guilds, and let's just consider you are the strongest of them. Each guild takes its own point, and you are on the top. Guess who will they attack next? Of course you. As a result, you will be consistently defending against two guilds at once. This event is PvP event, which means the cursor on everyone who is not in your guild automatically becomes combat. You don't need to press control as in regular locations. Kanturu Domination event also counts to the victim and killer achievements. The event have some features. 30 seconds after teleporting to event, the rate at which your character drinks HP potions begins to gradually decrease, to the point that you will not survive a strong attack at all. This is done in order to slightly reduce the gap between guilds and reduce the monopoly on events. 
Also, when dying, players appear in Kanturu core and need to use the NPC again to enter Kanturu domination, but there is a slight delay to enter to make death more significant. As you already understand, the event is very active and has its own strategies, so it will be always interesting to compete with other guilds. Depending on the number of points scored, there may be three prizes. Here is the list of awards. To be able to capture the territory of Kanturu Arena, you need to score at least 1000 points. At the morning event, the winner will receive a small arena with spots, mini bosses and loot. And at the evening event, you will receive an additional guild buff as a reward until the next event. A large arena with a large number of spots, mini bosses and useful loot. Entrance to concrete locations is through the NPC in Kanturu Core. The next event has very similar rules to Kanturu. Larencia Fortress event. This is also a PvP event, but it is located in a more dense environment, where the intensity of battles increased significantly. It will be much more difficult to keep distance for ranged fighters, and there are different approaches to the spot, also located in corners of the event. Almost everything is the same here, by controlling spots, killing special monsters, guilds receive points, and the guild with the most points wins. The event takes place in Laurentia Fortress, which oddly enough is located in Laurentia. We go to the left exit from the capital and see there is such a confident fortification into which you can teleport, both throughout NPC Fortress Keeper in Laurentia itself, at the bar and at the castle itself. The event lasts 15 minutes and starts at 18 pm server time on all days except Sunday. On this weekend it starts at 16 pm. In Laurentia Fortress is much more difficult to hold specific places for a long time, since the battle occurs constantly and on much more smaller scales. But in PvP at Laurentia Fortress event, the damage is reduced by 50%. On the other hand, there are no more advantageous spots, but battles mostly take place at the entrances on the left and on the right, since these are the only passages to the spots. You can often see how ranged players take positions away from the entrances and try to hold the opponents with their attacking power, not allowing them to pass. But everything is not so simple, because in the middle of the castle every 2 minutes a boss appears, giving 200 points and from whom you definitely need to fight. The boss dies quickly, so it's also the matter of reaction who will eliminate him first. Guilds in their discords very often count down the appearance of the boss and move to the center of the castle right before the spawn. Often this is done by using Dark Wizard and his teleport and mass teleport abilities, with which he can overcome walls and then teleport his allies to the center using mass teleport. This way you and your team save a lot of time and take up positions. Don't forget about the feature of Fire Scream. With its help, you can attack through textures and be useful even while waiting for the boss at the center of the fortress. Attack your opponents from all angles without giving them time to rest. In Laurentia Fortress, everything is exactly the same as in Kanturu Domination. Tanks occupy spots, the strongest groups moves, clears points and defends them. Killing players and fortress spirits from behind the walls of the fortress is not prohibited, so battles often take place outside the castle, since during the event the entire location around the Laurentia fortress becomes free PvP zone, and outside, using rage skills, you can finish off monsters in spots earning points for yourself. This is often done by dark wizard and elves, who are also needed to be killed. 30 seconds after teleporting to event, the speed at which your character drinks HP potions begin to gradually decrease, just like in KD. When dying, players appear inside the city of Laurentia and need to use the NPC again to enter the fortress, and there is a slight delay to enter to make death more significant. Depending on the number of points scored, there may be three places. 
As a reward, guilds also receive an increase in guild buff for a day and a valuable loot boxes. Here is the list. Your clan needs to reach a minimum of 1000 points to have a chance to own the castle, just like in Kanturu Domination. One of the guilds with more than 1000 points will be randomly selected and will receive access to Laurentia Fortress with a private spot for 24 hours. This spot is especially convenient because it can be accessed from the first levels due its location at the starting map. And just imagine how quickly you will level up after the reset. In addition, monsters that appear in the castle drop a significant amount of gold, which you can collect with the help of the pet Rudolf, and in the set with the Zen option. King Ring King of the Ring is a relatively solo PvP event that occurs on a regular basis for 10 minutes every 2 hours immediately after Chaos Castle, for example at 13.10, 15.10, 17.10, etc. At one of the specified locations where the rings are located. Arcania, Laurentia, Devias, Noria, Atlans, Tarkan. To win, you must remain the only player in the ring, killing all other participants, or be as close to the center of the ring as possible if there are other players inside of the ring, and gradually gain points which will be displayed in the lower left corner on the screen. If you are the only player in the ring, then every second you get 7 points. If there are several players in the ring, then the one closest to the center received 4 points every second. For each kill in the PvP ring radius you get 5 points, for death 1 point, for killing the current leader you get 100 points, for kills and deaths in the PvP ring radius players also receive a good amount of experience. For fair play the display of nicknames is disabled at the event and all participants are given the same skins. If a player has already won an event today, then when he comes to the next event on the same day, he will not be able to receive points and will not receive a prize, and the speed of drinking his pots will be significantly slowed down. This way there will be 12 different winners every day. The counter is reset at midnight server time. In addition, the King of the Ring ranking with the weekly rewards is available on the site. Features of the event all damage reduced by 40%, guild buffs, shield defense skill and party are disabled. For each class, personal settings for the speed of drinking HP pots to balance the event. The current leader receives an additional slowdown in speed of drinking the HP pots. At the beginning of the event all buffs are reset, and during the event you cannot buff other players. Fight and win Violet Mystery Box rewards from 1 to 5 or Shard of Condor, which is one of the ingredients to create Flame of Condor, a rare item for creating wind. Chaos Castle It is one of the most important PvP events for farming Flame of Condor and filling champion and competitor achievements. It occurs every odd hour and lasts 10 minutes. To enter you need to buy a Guardsman armor and right click on it. You will have to fight players and monsters to be the last one standing, you will be all similar looking to each other and it will not be easy. Taking into account other characters, there will be a total of 100 enemies in the area. There are no fiends in this event, so falling from it will be deadly, which is one of the options for your defeat in it. So staying further away from the edges will be a very good strategy. But as the monster's amount decrease, the event area will also decrease under your feet. In addition, every time a monster dies there is a chance that it will explode and move you in any direction. The explosion can push you off the map, in which case the event will be over for you. Doesn't sound easy, right? So it is! You will be pushed, kicked, thrown from the height, and as soon as monsters run out, the remaining players will hit each other even more accurately and actively in this arena. Transport pets such as Horn of Uniria, Dinorant, Horse and Fenrir are not active during this event. 
as well as the Raven, making the battle more difficult for the classes like Dark Lord. You cannot create a party during this event or buff other players. The longer the Chaos Castle goes, the slower the pots will be drunk. So that the strongest really wins and not the one who got tired with his running around. If at the end of the time two or more players remain alive, the winner will be determined by points, which is by the number of mobs killed. Whoever killed the most mobs won. When a character is killed in Chaos Castle, he will be transported back to Devias. To win, you need to be the last and the only survivor by killing all the monsters and all other players. The winner will receive a pink chocolate box, from which various types of jewels can fall, including Jewel of Luck and the rare Flame of Condor. Team Deathmatch The event takes place every day at 14 pm and 20 pm server time. On the day of Castle Siege, the time of this event, like others, ships depending on the server. Event duration 20 minutes. In order to get to event, you need to type the command slash join TDM. You will have a window of 5 minutes to use this command from 20 pm to 2005. And you will be teleported to event at the beginning of it. At 2006, all players who used slash join TDM are teleported to the Team Deathmatch Arena battlefield and are divided into two teams of equal strength. Red team and blue team. Sorting takes place taking into account resets and character classes. The number of people in teams is displayed in green in the game chat at the start of the event. At the event you can create groups, but it's more difficult to contact to each other since a cloud of text will not appear above you. Teamwork as elsewhere is the key to success in TDM. Having quickly assembled a group of 5 different classes and received all the buffs, it's time to build a strategy. The essence of the event is exterminate the members of the opposite team. After death, when revived, the player briefly receives the Berserker effect, which increases all his basic characteristics such as health, defense and damage, which will not allow you to camp opponents at their base. The timer and the number of frags for each team are displayed in the right corner of the screen. Green is the numbers of frag of your team. Red number of enemy team frags. Sword the number of your kills. Skull the number of your death. And the purple diamond is the number of creeps killed. Speaking of this monster creeps. They are special monsters which appear across the maps. By killing them you will receive the stacking buff of your defense, damage and health. By accumulating a lot of them you can significantly increase your strength and influence of the map. Dying thoughtlessly will not be the best idea since the player has only 15 lives. When you run out of your lives, you will be teleported out of the arena, but you can still get prize and points if your team wins. For winning the event, all players from the winning team receive a prize, Violet Mystery Box. In addition, the site have the team deathmatch rating system, which players scores at the event. The rating is updated every week and the best players are awarded bonuses. Points for the event will be awarded as follows. Your team won and you survived 2 points. Your team won and you did not survive 1 point. Your score the most frags on your team regardless of whatever you win or lose, you will get 1 extra point. Thus the maximum you can score for the event is 3 points. This is if you win, survive and kill the most people. Victory at the event is awarded in two cases. When the enemy team runs out of lives or when times runs out and team with the most kills wins. At the end of the event, surviving participants will be teleported to their original locations. Some advice. 
To attack an enemy, you do not need to hold the control key. There are special traps placed on the map into which you can push your opponents. After killing a group of enemies, you should not go to their spawn, as you will be most likely dead there. So avoid players with the Berserker buff after death. The ability to teleport to the other locations is disabled on the event. You cannot leave the game after accepting the invitation window, otherwise you will not get into the event. Do not leave the game after you run out of lives, otherwise you will not receive the prize box and points if your team wins. Crywolf event The event takes place every Wednesday. Crywolf Fortress is located in the southeastern part of Loran Valley. It is a forward fortress where allied forces of humans and elves fight against the forces of Kundun. The harsh of the geographical features of the fortress make it natural barrier for defense and a key strategic arena blocking the path for Kundun's army. Kundun's troops were unable to advance north and the front line was now at a stalemate. Therefore, Kundun ordered Lemuria to send troops to Crywolf Fortress to resolve the situation. This huge guardian statue was created based on the ancient power of the elves, so it is able to protect itself from evil spirits that drive away the troops of Kundun. But once a week, the statue becomes weak and attacked by Kundun troops led by Balgas. There are five altars around the statue for protection, and only elves can transfer power to the altars. If these altars are destroyed, the statue will lose its ability to protect the fortress, making the statue a prime target for Balgas monster troops, and you will fail. The success of the quest will depend on the player's ability to protect the altars and the elves who give the power to altars. As soon as Crywolf begins, you need to install from 1 to 5 elves above level 350 on the altar so that the event does not end in defeat. You can only place one elf on each altar and receive contact on it only twice. After, it will turn red and close. Failure to complete the contact can be caused by a character leaving the altar while it is in effect or when a character dies during the contact. It means elves can return to the altar only once. A second time is unacceptable. Depending on the health and number of elves, health of the statue increases. As long as there at least one living elf in contact with the altar, you will not lose. The event starts at 9.30 pm server time and you will be shown the appearance of Balga's army. The event lasts half an hour. Once the battle begins, the interior of village will transform from safe zone into combat zone. Players will not be able to use the personal store or talk with NPCs. Guilds gather at the castle early to meet both opponents and monsters. For killing each monsters, event points are given. At the start of the event, 12 Dark Elves, 4 on each side, appear at the entrances to the castle, surrounded by warriors of Balga's army and siege weapons. Each Elf has a nice drop of items, for example, Nightblade, Albatross Bow, Great Dragon, Dark Master, and so on. I will leave a link to the list of items dropped from the Elves in the description of the video. In order for Balgas to appear, you need to kill every last Elf. But do not forget, most likely you will also fight with the enemy guild for each elf and the boss himself. If the character dies in the battle, he is resurrected at the start of Crywolf. When Balgas appears, the team is given 6 minutes to kill him. If they do not meet this time, the event is considered to be lost. Be careful, Balgas can freeze everyone around him removing elven defense buffs. Whoever contributes more damage to the boss will have the opportunity to pick up the drop. But you can also prevent enemies from completing the event by killing enemy elves on the altar. When Balgas is defeated, he drops. 
three random items from the list I will leave a link to in the description. But in short, only weapons from the green mystery box. And there is the chance of the Mace of King weapon dropped with the highest grade. Also, all elves who stood on the context will receive a bless. Yes, that's a lot. Now let's talk about the new unique event Devia's Fortress. A fortress has been built in our winter city, Devia's Fortress. This fortress is several times larger than the one located in Laurentia and occupies the significant part of the entire Devia's location. Guilds will be able to capture this fortress and take it into their possession. Owning the fortress will give you access to spots, bosses and goods located there. Also, golden monsters, red dragons, fortune poaches, white wizards and even great dragon can appear inside of the fortress. The essence of the Devious Fortress battle is very similar to previous events. Teams will fight against each other to hold places. But now there is no need to kill monsters on the places, you just need to hold it. So now you will need to fight more actively for positions and use skills that push opponents, for example like Horse Skill of Dark Lord. Also the bosses will appear around the castle giving points to the killing guild. And looking of the size of the castle, battles will now be more tied to coordinating the movements of teams, which increases the dependence on good and well-coordinated teamwork. Depending on the number of points scored, there may be three places. As a reward, guilds also receive an increase in guild buff for a day and valuable loot boxes. Your clan needs to reach minimal of 1000 points to have a chance to own the castle. Just like in Kanturu Domination and Laurentia Fortress. One of the guilds which have more than 1000 points will be randomly selected to take over the castle. Bosses of this location. Armored Goldsmith drops Jewel of Goldsmith. Ice Devil from which drops Bless, Soul, Zen and Violet Mystery Box. Ice Lord drops Zen, Violet Mystery Box and Pink Mystery Box. Ice King drops Zen, Violet Mystery Box, Pink Mystery Box and Green Mystery Box. It will be better for us to leave most important weekly event Castle Siege for the next video in order to devote a decent amount of time to it and try to analyze it in details. I really hope this big guide was useful to you and if it was there, we will be glad to see your like, subscription and opinion in comments. Thank you for watching until the end and play Mew Bless Universe.